So yeah, she uh, she got Jason and I our baby's first outfit, and it's perfect. It's like it's it could fit. It could fit, you know, it could be perfect for a boy or it could be perfect for a girl. And um, the outfit also came with a pair of little, little sneakers, little runners. I just thought that was so adorable. And the fact that my friend gave us that to never lose hope and have faith that we will become parents one day. Even though, you know, Jason suffers from Marfan syndrome and I've been... Oh, I have been cursed with this ridiculous, messed up, I'm sorry, fucked up disease called endometriosis. So, um, she is, she, like, our baby will, it was just very sweet of her. And, um, it meant a lot when she did it because I was very low, um, trying to come to terms with this, uh, disease. So, but then, um, Jason and I, we bought this little hat. Uh, we bought this hat for our baby um, at the Target in Buffalo, New York. When I came, when I, when we uh, went there for my birthday weekend back in April. And uh, we went to Target. And Target has just like the best baby clothes. And we just felt like... We just wanted, you know, we were just, you know, it was my birthday weekend and um, I was, I was actually born in Buffalo, New York and I wanted to see the hospital where my mom gave birth to me and it was just, you know, especially with dealing with infertility and stuff, I just felt that it was just something that I needed to do. I needed to see where my mom gave birth to me and where I, you know, where I came out of her and, um, so yeah, so I saw the hospital and, uh, you know, we, we spent a lovely weekend in Buffalo and then we, we did a little bit of shopping and then, you know, it kind of went with the whole kind of birthday trip and me seeing the hospital where I was born. We ended up buying a little hat for our baby. But um, that's it. Um, I, I, I don't want to buy too much stuff. Um, I kind of, I you know, I feel like I've got, we bought something together and then my girlfriend got me something that symbolizes hope and courage to get through um, this crazy, crazy nightmare of infertility. So, um, so that's what we have for our baby. Question number 14, what things slash designs do you like for a nursery? Uh, Jason and I have definitely talked about how we would design our nursery and I think we very much like kind of crafts like kind of art artsy kind of I don't know if you know the website Etsy so kind of like like you know if, if someone from Etsy was to come in our room and design something you know, very arty and, and very, but, but very modern and stuff. Um, so yeah, so sorry. So I guess it would be modern yet warm and creative with filled with creative energy and art and, and paintings. And we definitely, um, Jason is an artist. He used to be an animator. Uh, right now he works in computers. So um, definitely, I'm sure he would draw some stuff for our baby and we'd hang it in the wall. Um, I'd love to have uh, pictures of us when we were younger as babies on the wall. Um, uh, do you plan to do pregnancy vlogs when you're pregnant? I, I kind of get like I get so excited because I, I hope that I can eventually get to that point where I'm pregnant and I can do a pregnancy vlog. I would like to do a pregnancy vlog. Um, I'm sure if, if you ladies wanted me to do a pregnancy vlog, I would do it. I think it's also a great way to document your pregnancy journey. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would be totally up for doing a pregnancy vlog for sure. Um, who are your favorite moms or parents to watch on YouTube? Um, truthfully, I, 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 
don't watch any like parents or, or kind of mom vlogs on YouTube. Right now I'm kind of solely um, dedicated to watching vlogs about women that are struggling with infertility um, or just trying to conceive. Um, I tend to, uh, you know, look for videos of women that are dealing with endometriosis or, or PCOS or any other or rare genetic disorders. Um, basically anyone who's kind of been struck with some sort of infertility issue, those are videos that I kind of gravitate towards. And it's just because um, of the support system. It really, uh, watching these vi videos give me hope and know that I'm not alone. So um, at this point in the game, I'm not really watching like new moms or, or unless, unless one of my subscribers became pregnant, then that would be a total different story. But right now, currently, um, I don't really, I'm not really focused on watching, um, you know, vlogs about, you know, parents and parenting and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I do have to say that all of my subscribers have amazing videos and you, all of you girls are my favorite, um, uh, are all of my, all of my subscribers are all of my favorite, uh, channels to watch and, um, there's so many lovely, beautiful women that I have met, um, in this uh, and the last question of my TTC tag is, how do you want your birth plan or labor to go? Well, I just, first of all, I just want to get pregnant. <laughs> so the minute I get pregnant, I will kneel in my condo and I will like praise the chakras or whoever the gods are above and thank them that I finally have a bib, a baby in my belly. Um, and I mean, I would, I'm gonna definitely soak in every aspect of the pregnancy um, in terms of my birth plan. I would like, like, I, I just, I just want to make sure everything's, everything is okay. If I have to have a cesarean because, you know, the baby's life is in jeopardy or my life is in jeopardy, okay. If I, you know, if I have the courage to do a natural birth and I can do it, great, power to me. Or if I have to have the traditional way and go to a hospital and get the epidermal, sure. I just want to be blessed with a baby and have it come out of me if it's vaginally or through my stomach, I don't care. Jason and I will be on cloud nine and I can't wait for that day. And I just wanted to give you ladies um, a background as to why um, my YouTube channel is called Project Bib. And Project, so it's Project Bib, which um, Bib stands for Baby in Belly. And, um, when I was diagnosed with stage four endometriosis and dealing with the fact that, you know, like my doctor, before he performed the laparoscopic surgery on me, said, Kiara, you only have a 10% chance of conceiving a child um, with these two cysts on you. And he was like, I can remove them, but really you need to start trying in a year to have a baby. So obviously I was heartbroken. Like I said, girls, I didn't know I had endometriosis. I grew up my life thinking, oh my God, like it would be, getting pregnant will be so easy. And, and I just, you know, I was just like, I could feel it. I know it's going to be easy and it hasn't. And I, the struggles of the infertility, the disease, and as well as you know, dealing with, um, dealing with people not being very supportive through our journey, um, family members, certain friends, um, and also dealing with regular life. Um, I come from a very dysfunctional family, um, don't have a great relationship with my dad, and 
um, that summer from August. So from, so the day that I had my surgery all the way up to December, I was in a really dark place coming to terms with this disease and my infertility. And I ended up having to quit my job, a job that I went to school for and um, was working in my industry for seven years and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I was basically working long hours just to kind of mask my pain and I pushed myself through my career and my job to numb how I was feeling inside. And I had to take a break from my job. Um, I'm temping now, so what I'm, I'm, I'm temping, um, which is great because I don't know what I would have done working 11 plus hours a day in dealing with fertility treatment. So um, if you girls are thinking about taking a break from work, temp, it's awesome. I work nine to five and I leave at 501, which is something I never had when I had, when I was working in, um, I was actually, um, I was working for a children's animated, um, a children's animated show. So as you can tell, that's very long hours and deadlines and pressure and stressful. So anyway, so I was going through a really rough time and um, there's not one day when I would be feeling dark and sad and I just was very angry as to why this couldn't come naturally or easy to me. There's not one day that Jason would say to me, he'd look me in the eye and he would say, I promise you, Kiara, you will have a baby in your belly. And those words is what kept me going and it gave me the strength to somehow get myself back to work. Um, and just live my life while dealing with infertility. So Project Bib stems from Jason saying, I promise you, you will have a baby in your belly because I would be like, promise me that this will happen for us. And he says, every day to me, I promise this will happen. You will have a baby in your belly, Kiara. So that's how Project Bib stemmed out. And see? The effects of Clomid are starting to activate. So yes, um, I hope that you ladies enjoyed my tag. And I'm thinking about all of you girls. Um, and um, I'm going to be watching your videos very shortly. I've noticed some girls have posted some videos. And um, I'll be uh, definitely uh, writing back to you girls. So thank you for listening to my long TTC tag. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Bye. Oh, and I will definitely keep you ladies posted as to whether or not I take my test on the Thursday, so this Thursday, or if I take it um, on the Friday. So yes, Project Bib, baby in your belly, and um, just, you know, tell yourself, girls, that this will happen for you. You will have a baby in your belly. Good night.